Hello there. Culture is more than a simple matter of clothes, food, and music. When Tony Blair opened the doors, we were told that it would be good for Britain to be exposed to cultures from around the world. We would see different cuts of clothes with different colour combinations. We would be listening to music from faraway lands. New foods would excite our palates. Our lives would be full of the enriching sounds of different languages. So multiculturalism was born. And with it came the poisoner's message from the left that there was no such thing as British culture apart from tea and biscuits, the Sunday roast, and going to the pub. All the while, they were bombarding our children with every negative message they could about the UK and its past, and they relentlessly pushed the mantra that every other culture around the world is superior to our own, and ruthlessly put down any dissent with their shameful cries of racist and bigot. But what they neglected to tell us is that culture means more than clothes, food, music, language, and even religion. It also includes ingrained attitudes to things like equality, your attitude to women and children, as well as animal rights, your attitude to minorities, your attitude to marriage, whether you actually want to be a part of the society you are in or not. Your attitude to corruption, crime, and yes, your attitude to punishment. Your attitude to accepting different religions. Your attitude to education and women's rights to education. Your left or right wing bias. It also includes where your true allegiances lie, to the extent of what you would kill and die for. And there's heaps more. And the whole cultural soup is part of who we are. It is not an add-on that you can just discard at will and get another one off the peg. As I said, it's ingrained. Culture runs deep in all of us. Just try to persuade a football fan, for example, to change teams. If you think that's hard, you try anything else. And trying to force people to change by bullying will never make converts. So when within a nation those cultural components are reasonably aligned amongst the vast majority of the population, all will be well. But when they are not, things can fray very quickly. Now the UK did have a homegrown battle of cultures fifty or so years ago. Groups of young men and women decided they wanted to be different and formed their own clubs with distinct clothing and practices. But coupled with a dangerous disdain for society as a whole, we had the mods and rockers fighting on Brighton's beaches. We had the skinheads and greasers battling across resort towns, and of course the football hooligans. No one cared if they rode a motorbike or a scooter, or if they had a long or short hair, or what football team they supported. Not until they got threatening and violent, that is, then people got very worried and very interested, and it took a concerted effort by politicians and the authorities to stamp it out. But do today's politicians and authorities have the bottle to stamp out the sort of sectarian violence we've seen in Leicester, and which seems now to have spread to Birmingham? Or will it be the same old story of the usual suspects blaming ordinary Brits as always? Well, many are blaming this whole recent episode on a cricket game in India on the 28th of August, so it won't be long before it's blamed on the British football hooligan culture being passed on, or some other such nonsense. The authorities should react in the same way to these events as they would if the mods and rockers rolled up with intent on Brighton Beach once more. Or is that now impossibly complicated by our new cultural differences, or worse, by the n- potential numbers involved? <laughs>